I just downloaded the 2014 Crime in the United States um, data from the UCRFBI.gov website and it is August 16th today. I only make note of that because it looks like they went back and corrected some numbers after the fact here. Um, so this these might change if you do the same thing. Um, but I will copy this address here and put it in the show notes as well as putting it up here so that you can see it throughout the video in case you want to go to this. But what I found was actually fairly surprising and I think good news. I mean, you, this obviously doesn't tell a whole story, um, but it is taking the violent crime and it's considering violent crime as murder and non-negligent manslaughter rape using the legacy definition which if you look down it looks like in 2013 they use a revised definition which must be more stringent because there's more than using the legacy definition so uh, these numbers would include the legacy definition and would ignore the new revised definition it would also include robbery and aggravated assault so if you take those one two three, four columns, they equal the total that we get in violent crime. Um, and then the population is um, listed in column B here. And they pro provide you with a violent crime rate per 100,000 inhabitants. So basically what they do is they take the crime rate, or the violent crime, divide it by the population, and then multiply it by 100,000 to give you an idea of violent crime per 100,000 people. For whatever reason, my brain just isn't taking this number in. It's very meaningful. Um, I do see it's going down, but I wanted to see it in percentages. So I inserted a row here and made a violent crime percentage column. And Simply divided violent crime by population and then changed it to percentage, kicked it out a decimal place or two, and then created a line chart here and got rid of the stuff I don't need for the chart. And let's format this a little bit. And we see we have this like very steadily sloping downward line, which to me is uh, a positive thing. Um, I know a number of things to be causing this. It could be uh, things are going unreported that used to be reported um, and a variety of other things that could be making this look like a positive thing. And in fact, it's not. But at surface level, it looks like a positive thing. And then I even went back and said, hey, look, I think we should be using the revised definition numbers. Um, if we're considering it as a violent crime now, we should count it. So I went back and manually changed this number to include that to see. Let me see how am I going to do this. Let me shrink this a little bit to see if it impacted the numbers. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. I need to keep it 100%, it looks like. So let's just move this down here. And we'll just remember 0.37%, 0.37%. And I want to change this to include the revised definition. So hopefully this percentage goes up if I've done this correctly. I said it included non-negligent murder and manslaughter. We're going to use the revised rate and not the legacy definition. And then include robbery and aggravated assault. And it did. It jumped up, but only 0.01%. So it barely even changed this graph. And if we take this down into 2014, it goes up by another... 0.01 percent 
So you're still seeing this downward slope. Um, obviously, we'd love it to see, be zero, but um, I don't know. This was a, a very positive finding for me today to see the violent crime rate has gone down. Um, I'm going to keep making these videos, digging into public data by the FBI and various sources um, that I find interesting because I think a lot of times when we hear stuff on the news and radio and all the, the negative the negatives throughout the day, uh, we don't always know the true positives that are potentially happening here. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helped.